Today we're going to look at organization structures, or organization charts. Uh, this is something I try to make as engaging as I can for students. Um, we get the students to draw the organization chart for this school. Fortunately, about 80 teachers um, and uh, senior administrators. Always good fun, because then you find out um, just who the students don't know. And they don't know who does what jobs. And sometimes they don't know that I, for example, am the head of commerce even though I've taught them for maybe two years or three years. Okay, so the organization structure, basically what it shows is the jobs undertaken inside the organization, who has responsibility for what, and basically how information should flow up and down the organization. And that shows you who's the most powerful person uh, within the organization. Okay, and obviously lots and lots of jobs are created by organizations because they want to try and meet their goals. And hopefully that should become apparent uh, as an organization structure changes throughout the years. 15 years ago, there probably wouldn't have been anyone in charge of CSR or social media. Uh, now, of course, CSR social media are very, very important inside businesses. Therefore, that should be reflected in the organization structure. And generally speaking, as you add more workers, the, the organization structure will get bigger and there will be more uh, layers added. So we're just going to look at a very, very simple organization structure, which I have created. Uh, it has five levels. Go from the top level, one, two, three, four, five, which you can see. Uh, the worker with the largest span of control is the factory manager assistant who has a controls 20 workers. Okay, uh, and that's reasonably straightforward to look at. Uh, if you excuse some of my bad drawing, but nevertheless, that should be able to tell someone to look at this very, very quickly if I want to find someone who uh, is in charge of advertising, who do I speak to? Okay, or maybe the advertising workers. Okay, um, so that's relatively straightforward to understand. Now, as you can see, there was five levels of uh, in this organization. That's quite often called the chain of command. The person with the largest span of control is the assistant factory manager, as they say, with 20 workers. If they are theory X workers, that is maybe a concern because it's very difficult for that assistant to be able to observe those 20 workers. If they are theory Y workers and they're all very, very dedicated and hardworking, maybe that's not such a big issue. The span of control can be controversial if it gets too big. Then the person is overseeing the, what the workers are doing may not be able to keep an eye on at all times. Uh, delegation, you will know delegation if you've got a younger brother or a younger sister or by your parents, they say to you, I, I want you to look after sibling uh, whilst they go out and do something. All right, you may view that as being a chore. Your parents are probably going to say to you, they're doing it because they trust you. Uh, in business, when something has been delegated from, say, the manager to the workers, uh, yes, hopefully it does uh, motivate the workers, but the manager is still going to be held accountable if something goes wrong, like you. If you do something, something happens to your uh, one of your siblings and they fall down and uh, break, break a leg or something like that, it will still be your parent who's not responsible, not you. All right? Uh, so, successful delegation, however, you may have to give the person increase in pay. You may have to say, recognize to the rest of the staff, this is the person who's been put in charge of this, this is maybe their new job title. If there's a problem, don't speak to me, speak to the person who I've delegated this task to. They may need training. Uh, and of course, if you're going to give people more work to do, what you might have to do is take away some of the more boring work, uh, the less demanding work, and give it to someone else. Because this new work you give them to them, uh, if it's going to take up lots and lots of the time, if you don't do that, then they may not be able to do a very, very good job at it. Then, we have some of the other phrases to do with the organization charts. Uh, a highly centralized organization is one where the people at the top make the decisions and the people at the bottom have no influence on that. Now, obviously that can happen in things like the army. Uh, people have to follow orders. Uh, but even somewhere like McDonald's, McDonald's will say, North America, this is a Big Mac. This is what you have to include. North America, these are your opening hours. North America, this is the price of the various things on the menu. So, even though there are various uh, organizations, as I said, like the Army, which seem naturally suited to having uh, centralized decision making, centralized decision making flows through all society. 
All right. However, then we have decentralized decision making. That's kind of like where the senior management don't really get that involved in what goes on in the organization. And the workers are allowed to make the decisions. That may motivate, but it may well mean that it's very difficult to bring the workers back under control again in the long term. Because the whole organization may become a little bit chaotic. Okay? Obviously, what you find is most organizations are a, somewhere in between being centralized and decentralized. Because uh, the boss at the very top can't make all the decisions, they can't run the business in every single town and city, uh, in every single situation. So they have to delegate a lot of that decision making to people further down. Bureaucracy. Uh, in many countries, if you want to buy things like land, or buy property, there's lots and lots of forms to go through. Uh, I recently had, got my passport, a new passport, and I had to get the visa to move from one passport to the, the, the new passport. And it took a long time to get a piece of paper, which I had to hand into my school office here, um, to show that I am a resident in China. Um, I've been here for 15 years, but it took a long time because uh, after the new levels of bureaucracy had been introduced, and it took longer, and I got more frustrated. All right, and as you can see, I think this wastes time and money. So those countries, maybe like New Zealand or Singapore, or very easy to start businesses, they are good for entrepreneurs because it's easy to start businesses because there's a lack of bureaucracy. Now, then we have different types of structure. It's maybe easier to start with the flat structure. Here we have just two levels. We have the boss and then we have 19 workers. So hopefully that should mean good communication. Obviously needs to delegate and allow the workers to take control of a lot of what goes on in the business. Uh, hopefully it motivates the workers, okay, because hopefully they have more uh, uh, responsibility. But it's harder for the boss to control these 19 people, because there's 19 of them. If, for example, we introduce uh, two assistant managers, maybe one manager would have eight workers and the other manager might have 11 workers. And therefore, these new managers would be able to watch the workers a lot more closely. All right, and because of uh, the flat structure here, maybe the workers don't really know what they're supposed to do. The tall structure obviously has many, many, many different levels. Uh, and that will, may allow me that each manager only has, has a very, very narrow span of control. They only have three or four workers underneath them. So able to watch what is happening. And then each of those people may have three or four people underneath them. Uh, and again, they can keep a close watch them. But it may mean communication takes a long time to move up and down the organization. It means there's lots and lots of opportunities for people to move up and down the organization, move up the organization, sorry. Uh, and again, that may motivate people. Then we have de -layering. If you've got a tall organization and it's got 14 levels, sometimes what happens is people in the middle layers may well be doing very, very similar jobs. And basically, that's a waste of money for the organization. It takes lots of time for information to pass up and down the organization. So sometimes organizations, they just de -layer. maybe take Two of the layers, rewrite job descriptions, and that way they can save lots of money. Obviously, that means lots of the jobs which have disappeared have got to go to other people. Um, so, obviously, the training has to occur. A good change management process needs to be undertaken to maybe say to the people who remain that their jobs are not under threat. And change management may mean you need to assure people they're going to receive full training. All right, and uh, I will be making a video soon about change management, so you can look at it then. Okay, different ways of organizing. The simplest uh, inside the school, with different departments, uh, English, Maths, Chinese, Business, in this school we call it Commerce. Uh, we have specialists in each of the departments. Uh, marketing, human resources, production, finance, might be the typical ones inside the business, because obviously these bit the four main units you study. Uh, we have matrix structures. Instead of people being uh, isolated in the, their uh, uh, departments, quite often people work together on a project. So for example, you have people from marketing, production, HR and finance all working together on a project and hopefully that enhances our communication. People then get to, to understand better what goes on in their organization. Films are a very good example of matrix structures. There's obviously hundreds of people come together uh, to make any movie. Okay, bringing in their special skills. Then we move on to uh, McDonald's. McDonald's is uh, organized by geography. 
All right, and they've done this a couple of years ago with my students uh, for the six key concepts uh, question. We focused on McDonald's, and one of the things we found out was that McDonald's has recently restructured, and this is how they've restructured. So, into four different ways. Okay, so the United States is one way because that's a core market. Then internationally, markets very important markets which are making very similar: Australia, Canada, France, Germany, and the UK. Then we have high growth markets which are data as being China, Italy, Poland. Etc. Et and then the foundational markets, the remaining markets. Um, so part of the reason for doing that is they want McDonald's to be able to move faster and respond quicker to uh, changing customer needs. So for example, maybe customers in the international markets are very, very similar. So something was introduced in the UK, maybe they can introduce very, very quickly uh, elsewhere. Okay. Um, then we finish with uh, Coca-Cola is uh, organizing itself by product. All right, it's decided we make lots and lots of soft drinks around the world. We're going to reorganize ourselves, move away from a geographical organizational structure which they used before, and do it in terms of five different sections: sparkling soft drinks, energy drinks, juice, dairy, plant-based drinks, water enhanced water sports drinks. Don't ask me the difference between sports and energy. And then a section which is termed game coffee. Okay? That might be because Coke and Sprite, which may well be in the sparkling soft drink section, uh, maybe they're in the maturity decline stage. These other, uh, the other four, energy, tea, coffee, etc., they may well be in the development, introduction, growth stages, right? And the strategies, the marketing mix, uh, which is used for these, may well be very, very different to how to market the sparkling soft drinks, okay? And this is the uh, range of, uh, part of the range of products sold by Coca-Cola. Okay, so you probably press pause and then decide which of these five uh, sectors they go into. And that is organization structures.